Hello, this is Darren Craddock from EnterHealth Botanicals with The Daily Dose. As always, bringing you crucial information to help you stay healthy and avoid things that cause you to lose health, at the same time as giving you things that will help build your health up. Really important question that I often get asked is, should I always buy organic? Are there some exceptions? Are there certain foods that are worse than others if they're not organic? So the question again is, organic, yes or no, when to know? Well, it's a valid question. And many people tend to lump organic into one particular area. And they think that, well, I just need to avoid organic because of the pesticides and herbicides that will be sprayed on regular crops. That is very important, but it's only part of the puzzle. Basically, when you look at an organic crop, not only is it grown without the use of pesticides and herbicides, or fungicides for that matter, it's also the way that the soil is um, taken care of and the land is taken care of on which those particular crops are grown. An organic farmer will use compost, will use other forms of natural fertilizers that tend to be richer in nutrients. Most conventional farmers will use, to a large extent, only three main nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So when you purchase something that's organic, and it's truly, legitimately organic, which of course organic standards are very, very strong. And I can attest to that because of the fact that I've been working on um, getting our facility at EnterHealth, not the products, because the products are already organically certified, but even the facility organically certified. You'd be, un you'd be astonished at the amount of paperwork and um, procedures that need to be put in place in order for that to be um, legitimately qualified as an organic facility. So, that being said, your organic crops and organically um, grown um, products are richer in nutrition. So yes, they do cost more, but they also deliver more nutritional punch. So when people clamor that, oh my gosh, organics are so expensive, I have to remind them that when you're buying an organic apple, you're getting much more nutrition than when you're buying a conventional apple. So even though it might cost twice as much, you're more than likely getting twice as much nutrition, or certainly a noticeable difference, a very noticeable difference. When it comes to pesticides and herbicides, yes, there are certain crops that do get uh, doused with way more chemicals than others. So uh, the Environmental Working Group has come up with the Dirty Dozen list, and it's actually gone beyond the Dirty Dozen. I'm going to go through a list of some of those, that list of, of, of basically the vast majority of fruits and vegetables that you need to avoid if they are not organic, at which in turn means you should buy them organic. Um, basically, there's apples, bell peppers, celery, green beans, strawberries, blueberries, peaches, spinach, lettuce, cucumbers, potatoes, and all leafy greens like kale and collards, for example. So that's your big list. Avoid all of those unless they're organic. Try to grow some of your own. I mean, most people in the wintertime here in Texas can grow good crops of lettuce, good leafy greens, and depending on where you are in the country, you know, certain things grow better at certain times of the year. We can grow strawberries down here, for example. I completely avoid strawberries if they're not organic. They receive, along with cotton, I think they're the second biggest recipient of pesticides. Those pesticides are endocrine disruptors, they're toxic to the central nervous system, otherwise, how would they kill bugs? That's how they kill bugs, because they're toxic to their central nervous systems. So you accumulate that in your body and you wonder, well, why is it so many people are having nervous system disorders? Why is it so many people are taking antidepressants? I mean, there are many reasons, but one of them is nervous system damage. Really important. Another thing to bear in mind is be specifically and particularly careful when purchasing imported fruits and vegetables because unfortunately as may seem, you may have hundreds of different pesticides that have been banned here in the US that are not banned in Mexico or Chile, for example. 
Well, where do many of our fruits and vegetables come from? In the wintertime, from Chile. Uh, in the summertime, a lot of them come from Mexico. So you may buy a particular fruit or vegetable that wouldn't be such a problem if it were grown here where the pesticides are not allowed, but you import it and suddenly it may have been exposed to certain different kinds of pesticides. Anyway, those are a few facts to bear in mind to help keep you healthy when it comes to produce. And uh, thank you all for watching and listening. This is Darren Craddock from Enter Health Botanicals with The Daily Dose.